So the primary focus of the Baylor Institute of Immunology Research is the relationship between the immune system and disease. The idea is to take um, the scientific findings and to, um, to translate them in a way they can be uh, utilized at the bedside in a clinical manner with the patient. What we have been doing at the Center for Infectious Diseases and Research, uh, so-called SIDRED, has been to really understand how the bug and the host, the, the, the person, interact and, and how resistance emerges. So the hollow fiber model for tuberculosis first developed in the early 2000s. From that time until today, the model has evolved and developed and has been adapted to incorporate more complexities of the disease to a point where now we can run up to a 24, 26 system hollow fiber study. This is a hollow fiber model system which we use in our lab for the development of anti-tuberculosis drugs. In the capsule, there are thousands of hollow fiber membranes are encapsulated. And then these tubes, one is the inflow tube to this peripheral compartment and other tube is the media is coming out from this cartridge. And then we have the syringes connected to this hollow fiber cartridge so that we can sample the system at different time points to culture the bacteria and then see what is the bacterial burden at a given time and if there is any drug resistance as a result of therapy is developing or not. Predictive accuracy of our model system is more than 94%. And we uh, partnered with uh, Critical Path uh, for TB drug regimens, CPTR, and the model was qualified as a drug development tool by the EMA and endorsed by the Food and Drug Administration. The endorsements have opened the door for a lot of uh, different pharmaceutical companies to bring in the different type of drugs that could be used to treat tuberculosis. And it has opened the door for us to combine these in this model to see if we can come up with new treatment regimens. We have been able to look in the hollow fiber to interrogate on how much missing of the drugs actually contribute to resistance. And we, we, we use some, some uh, modeling and computer simulations to help us understand that. And what we found, surprisingly, is that it's not the missing of drugs which mainly contribute to resistance, but it's inadequate doses or drug exposures for the bug that leads to this resistance. We do studies with colleagues in South Africa at the University of Cape Town, and we are able to do whole genome sequencing of the patients and the, tuber the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. So that's called DNA sequencing. We also do a second type of sequencing, which is called RNA sequencing. We wanted to study the transcriptomic profile of the host, which is the patient, and the bug, which is mycobacterium tuberculosis. If we can decipher the transcriptomic changes in the host, then we can work on the immunological aspects and develop or design a better vaccine to prevent the tuberculosis infection. We have tools to use artificial intelligence algorithms to look at outcomes starting in the hollow fiber model and in actual patients um, using studies from South Africa and India. So we have uh, deployed artificial intelligence algorithms to, to find out what is it that predicts who will fail therapy. We also have a mathematical modeling group inside tuberculosis cavities and inside the human body. And this helps us now simulate and be able to play what-if games mathematically to see what we can do to boost the immune system and to kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Right now, when the companies are developing the new anti-tuberculosis drugs, the drugs are very, very expensive. What we are doing here, we are using the drugs which are off patent or they are trying to come off patent, they are generally available. So in general, treatment of drug resistant tuberculosis in children is going to be less expensive and if you can save a life or child, what cost you can put it on. There's always been this thinking that we have had in TB that is only those three drugs. But now with, with these 
new tools that are coming up, we can now test a whole range of other drugs. Essentially, we should be able to treat tuberculosis like the way we treat any other infections using a whole range of other drugs. And this will help patients with many different kinds of conditions, in, which has been a problem for the TB program. Here at uh, BIR and, and our uh, Center for Infectious Disease Research, uh, we have a team of talented, diverse people, very integral to, to the success of this model. And at times, you know, a lot of them will make very valuable comments and input in terms of, you know, be it mechanistical problems or even in terms of ideas as, as to how we can um, continue to build or enhance this model.